You're part of that legacy. Hallelujah. Come on. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. I'll cross the hottest desert. I'll travel near for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you and to be all you and my King for your glory I will do anything Lord Oh, 
God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we worship you. We want to be where you are, Jesus. We want to be where you are, Jesus. You sit high. You look low. You're reigning on the throne. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and bless, bless him. Bless your Lord Jesus. Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. Bless your Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We magnify in your Lord the Jesus. highest. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I love that song. Because that's what we should all desire in our hearts every day. It's to be in that place, that wealthy place, where God's glory dwell. Amen. 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 I want to talk about something today. It's in my spirit. And I've been studying this for the last couple of weeks. The breach called unforgiveness. But it also talks about Thanksgiving because we're approaching the Thanksgiving season, which would be next week. But there are many people who are angry. There are many people who are bitter. Many people are worried, don't know what they're going to do. And they're holding on to resentment, hatred, Rebellion, stubbornness, unforgiveness. So if you stand with me, we go into the word. Then I'm going to have a, look, a word of prayer in just a second. Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4, the verse, verse 1. 
I have several scriptures, but I'm only going to use this one in this passage. In verse 1, it says, but it came to pass. That means something just happened. That Sanballat heard that we builded the wall. He was wroth. That means angry. Indignation. And he took great indignation, which is provoked to anger, and mocked the Jews. You may be seated. You may be seated. So it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth, fierce anger, and took great indignation to provoke them and mock the Jews. So, Father, we thank you. For this opportunity, God, to share your word. I pray that something be said, done, God, that will inspire, provoke change in our hearts. If we hold on to any form or unforgiveness, God, in order to come into your presence, you said in your word without holiness, no man can see the Lord. Help us, God. To allow the Holy Spirit inside of our hearts to purge us from the spirit, from the spirit of unforgiveness. That we'll be clean and we'll be free to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. This is something that God put in my spirit a while ago, and it just, just keep burdening my heart concerning leadership in the house of God. Because so many people in the house of God, they come in angry. Someone may have said something wrong, didn't look at them right when they walked through the door, didn't speak to them right. So I'm mad at that individual. But instead of doing as the word says, if you have all against your brother, go to him and make amends. What we do, we harbor it in our heart. It festers. And I found out something this week. That unforgiveness is like cancer. It spreads from one individual to the next individual. Why? Because it's a spirit. Knowing that, it's just like a person who's a drug addict or alcoholic. They're bound to an addiction. And they can't seem to find themselves getting free because they're bound by the spirit. So when God began to speak, he said, just like cancer, it starts out with a sore or a boil or some type of lump and begins to fester and spread throughout your body. That's how the enemy does with, with unforgiveness. He used this thing as an agent to keep you bound in a spiritual prison. I read something yesterday, and it talked about how there are many people in the house of God imprisoned by somebody else's problem. In prison, so I put myself in a jail cell of unforgiveness when the other individual is going on with their life like nothing even happened to them. But because I'm mad at them, I want them to be mad at me in return. So I'm not getting the reciprocation I'm expecting. So I find myself angry. I mean, God speaks me, it just blows my mind. I was thinking about Joe for a second. I said, I'm going to use Joe for an example. I come to Joe. I said, Joe, I said, man, you ain't, you ain't worthy to do, do what God wants you to do. And Joe said, what you mean? I'm doing what God told me to do. I'm studying God. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what God says. So, so he gets mad at me because I came to him wrong. So if I don't come correct to Joe, Joe going to hold this in his heart. If he don't come to me and say, hey, you know, I didn't like what you said to me the other day. I, I want you, you know, to apologize for that because that, that was out of order. We do it all the time in the house of God. We cross one another because we don't like the way the message brought to us so you attack the messenger. And God talked to me. He said, correct, 
Corrupt communication corrupts good manners. So if my communication is off when it comes before God, how can I expect to communicate with my brother and sister in the house of God when I'm out of order? So when God began to speak, Mark 11, verse 25 says, and when you stand praying, what? Forgive. When you stand what? In an upright position, praying, petitioning God's throne, seeking God's face. The breach will be opened up in your heart of unforgiveness if you don't let go of the, the spirit of that thing. People, I hear it on the news and in Facebook, different places and broken relationships, folks mad at one another. So I want a divorce. I'm mad at you, so I don't want the relationship no more. I'm mad at you because I don't feel you treat me where I want to be respected. So I want to get away from you. I want to cut you off. So when people divide in relation, we don't divide in peace no more. We divide in war. So I'm mad because the relationship didn't work out. So I'm going to hold this in my heart towards you. Every time I talk to you, I'm going to have a negative attitude. Every time you come into my presence, I'm going to speak a negative word. And, and so God says, as the people of the Lord, you need to check your attitude. Check your attitude for you wreck yourself. And many times we get into a negative attitude because I didn't like the person leaving me. Come on now. Just because a relationship dissolves, don't mean the whole resentment for the rest of your life. Because what happens, and this is what God showed me. He said, just like a gap in that door. If you don't seal that gap, and that's an out exterior door so the wind can come in. If you don't seal it, what happens? The cold wind come in the wintertime through your door. Right? Your heart the same way. The cold spirit of the enemy will enter to your heart and begin to corrupt your life. And God said, you got to go and get the weather stripping, put it around the seal of the door so you can close the gap so the wind can't come into your house. The enemy creeps in unaware. The Bible tells us this over and over and over. Be aware of your adversary who is like a roaring what? Lion. Lions are fierce. They're not cowards. He said, your adversary, he pretends to be a lion. He's not a lion. He didn't say it was a lion. But the problem comes in, I give the adversary my power by holding him to unforgiveness. So when God's trying to set me free, guess what? He's taking control of my mind. Everything happens to a believer originally. I talk about it so much. Think about the thoughts you think before you act upon any situation. Let the word of God get in your mindset so when I do have to react, I react in wisdom, knowledge, and truth, not proactive against people to hurt them. Just like Nehemiah, he purposed in his heart to seal the breach. He got his people in position. Every one of them working. Some have swords in their hand. Others still working. But the thing that was so significant about it was if there was any type of unforgiveness, they squashed it. Because they had a purpose in mind to do what? To repair the wall. And God says, we cannot build this house with anybody in this house holding to unforgiveness. You got to get it out. God says, you got to allow the washing agent of the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and purify your thought life. In order for the heart to get right, guess what? The mind got to get right. If my mind is warped, my whole life going to be warped. And the Holy Spirit is telling us today, Ephesians 4.32, and be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has what? Forgiven you. If God saw fit to love us so much unconditionally to say, you know what? I'm not going to hold you against your sin. 
I'm not going to charge against your iniquity. Matter of fact, I'm going to remind myself of the blood of Jesus because the blood paid the price for your sin and iniquity. Therefore, in my eyes, I see you clean. The problem comes in, we look at one another, I don't see them clean. I don't see my sister clean. I don't see my brother clean. I'm looking for every accusation, every fault I can find in an individual, and that's what I'm looking at. But God says, for Christ's sake, you got to forgive. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about him getting the glory through our obedience. Glory to God in the highest. Proverbs 24, 17. Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth. How many times you had an enemy in your life, someone you call the enemy, and when something bad happened to them, you start laughing at them? Check this out. You laugh at them, you cause the same curse to fall on yourself. The same thing that happened to them, God will allow the enemy to afflict you with the same thing. Why? Because your heart was not right when your enemy fell. He said, let not thine heart be glad when he what? Stumbleth. You and I are vulnerable every day of our lives to the enemy's tactics. The thing that protects us from the enemy is the blood of Jesus. When I get in the word of God, a lot of the word of God get in my mind and my heart. The word puts a covering over my life and my family life and my children's life, over my generation. So when the enemy tries to come in, God says, I shielded you. I covered you. I protected you. I carried you. In the moment you were about to slip and fall, he said, guess what? I dispatched my angels all day and all night. To watch over you, lest you fall and dash your foot against the stone. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. We got to get things right with ourselves. If I see my brother stumble, the Bible says I need to go to him and help reprove his ways that he can be right before God. Because if I'm a child of God, God is going to hold me accountable if I see my brother messed up. And I know not say, man, you can make it. God is on your side. The blood has cleansed you. The strength of God inside of you to help carry you over the storm in life and the trials and your tribulations. Hallelujah. 1 John 4 and 20. If a man say, I love God, and he hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God who he has not seen? We come in the house of God every Sunday. We claim that we love God. But we got a problem against my brother. I got a problem against my sister. And God says you need to get it right. Get right, church. For the king is soon to come. One of these old days, the Lord is going to appear in the cloud. He said he's coming back for a bride without a spot or wrinkle. Will you be in the number when God calls your name? Or will it say, depart from me? I never knew you. You work of iniquity. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another. Tender-hearted. That's compassionate. Forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. God wants us to know today it's not a hard thing to do. It's only hard when you resist him. It's only hard when you oppose him. It's only hard when you fight against him. But God says it's easy. Because my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. If you cast the anger, you cast the resentment, you cast the problem, 
at the feet of Jesus. God says, I will carry you. I will deliver you. I will heal you. I will set you free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on and give God praise. A house divided can't stand. When you when you see you see, we're all part of the body of Christ. When we are connected together by Christ, when we're dealing with an unforgiveness spirit, we become divided. It's like the left foot won't follow the right foot. When you're trying to make one step, the other leg is trying to go backwards. It's going to keep you in a place where you don't like. Tell me, I, 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 I got, do me a favor, uh, Deacon, Deacon, Deacon Davis. Go to St. Luke's chapter 11, verse 19. Yes, Lord. 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 17 and 11. I'm sorry. Chapter 17, verse 11. St. Luke 17 and 11. Charles touched on something, and, and, and he'd been teaching a lot of, about unforgiveness in the battlefield of the mind. I'm going to tell you something. That when you deal with unforgiveness, it becomes toxic in your life. Because every time you try to move forward, that toxic memory of unforgiveness creeps right on in and make what would be better toxic. <laughs> if you can get rid of toxic unforgiving, mean, when you can let that unforgiveness go, I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you, I, I know, I know that there are certain things antibiotics can't fix. You can go to the doctor and you can get the pill of serum, you can get all the medicine you can, you can get hooked up to IV, and it just can't fix unforgiveness but I serve a God that said if you don't forgive then asking me to forgive you is only in vain somebody need to give God praise right there because in order for me to be free mentally I have to let it go Ooh, I don't want to be your slave <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. Ooh, come on, let's give God for that word from Pastor Charles. Let's give God praise for that. The breach of unforgiveness. <laughs> Jesus, hallelujah. You, man, I, I'm, 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 I'm call you tonight. We'll talk about something because you got to find out where the problem came in that the hatred the hatred the hatred of those symbolics <laughs> you know they, they're part of a descendant of great men and great women they're part of a great descendant but just because you are part of a great descendant don't mean that everybody that's in your life is going to be great amen I want, I want, if you would, just go with me to the book of Luke, the 17th chapter. In Charles was bringing all those scriptures, and I was like, well, he might just get close. 
But when he skipped it and went to Ephesians, I said, oh, he done missed it. <laughs> to God be the glory. In, I want to say, Spirit of living God, I thank and praise you for who you are and what you're about to do. I give you the glory and I give you the praise. I am but a vessel of clay. Use me and shape me and word these lips to whatever you want them to say. In Jesus' name, amen. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem and he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, that goes to show you that it's not a good place. No name, they didn't even name this certain village. It's no man's land. Nobody needs to be there. And there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices. You know, that's the thing right there. A lot of us, we're afraid to lift up anything. But I remember the old song, Lift Every Voice and Sing. You know, I, I like those old songs like that. But when we lift up our voices, the Bible says, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. It, they, it, it wasn't no other kind of supplication. They didn't indicate anything else. All they asked for were mercy. All they asked for were mercy because, look, Jesus was already grace. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Now you got a double dose. Now you got grace. And now you got mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, 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 and on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. He didn't say a prayer. He didn't say no. He didn't go, he shot she kande, oh sha, go show yourself. But he didn't say none of that. He spoke a word with the word go. And and go show yourselves unto the priest. The Bible says, and somebody say, and it came to pass. That as they went, they were cleansed. They reacted on the action of Jesus' word, go. Nothing happened until they moved. They moved on the word, go. The cleansing came as they what? Went. <laughs> Woo, I don't think some of y'all hear me right now. I'm telling you right now. Hallelujah. So, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorifying God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus, and Jesus answering said, "Where there are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? And there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger." And he said unto him, "Arise, go thy way; thy faith has made." Behold, and the word of God is blessed. You may take your seat. Hallelujah. 
it, it's interesting to think, to, to, to think that when I thought about this, when God said, I want you to speak on it, and I said, I know this is the season, Lord, and he said, I want you to focus on N1. I'm different because I'm the one. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I'm different because I'm the one. Woo hallelujah. I am the one. I, I'm different because, look, I, I, I'm, I'm not the same as them. What defines who you are? What defines you to be the one? I'm different because I'm the one that's bold enough to walk out of a di disastrous place and enter into uncharted territory i am the one hallelujah i, I don't know i don't know who this is for but i want to let you know god said you are the one you're different because you are the one you ain't, you, you ain't like everybody else because you are the one why well, seem like everybody else is getting this and getting that? But I got you got to declare for yourself. I am different because I am the one. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! I am the one. I'm, I'm the head, and I am not the tail. I am different because I am the one. I'm the one that's bold enough to and, and respectful enough to go to the one that will not. For mercy, he gave me grace. <laughs> that when I asked for mercy, he gave me deliverance. When I asked for mercy, he gave me love. I love the song that when they sang, Love lifted me when nothing else would work. It was love that lifted me. See, when, see, when you think about those things, it was love. It was love that lifted them from a bad place. Because what he said to them, Deacon Davis and Vivian Davis, well, he said, go. Nothing happened until they made a move and action. God was calling them to be activated. God was calling them to be activated. To tread upon serpents. To tread upon what the devil said they'll never become. To tread upon what they never thought would ever happen. I, so it was 10 with the same purpose in mind to be healed. But one was different. It, it, it's, it's amazing that in one, he was not Jewish. The Bible specifically specifies that he was a Samaritan. He was a dog. He was a nobody. He was the least among all of, he was the least among the nine. If anybody would have chose anybody, they would have chose the nine and left the one. But I am the one. Come on somebody, you gotta declare for yourself that I am the one. I'm different because I'm, I'm the one, baby. I'm different because I'm the one that he chose me. He chose me over the nine. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I'm so different that I realize that as I walk, I not only was being cleansed, I was healed. Hallelujah. I realize that the old rugged shoes I stood in in this dead place with these dead nine men that all they was out for for what they wanted for themselves but I was the one who realized that when grace hit me he hit me with not only mercy he gave me grace Grace spoke to me in a broken place.
grace. Grace told me to go show yourselves to the priest. But I made up in my mind. I don't need to talk to those priests. I need to go to the high. So the Bible tells me that he, he as he was walking, he realized that healing took place in his body, that his legs were now delivered to, to operate in running mode, that his hands were able to be lifted up, hallelujah, that his aching body stopped feeling a whole lot better, that the leprosy that disformed his face, disfigured his life, left his body. I didn't have time to look in the mirror, but I was the one that realized that there's something different about who I was after he told me to go. The Bible don't say how far he walked, but as they went, he turned around. And the Bible said he ran and fell down at the feet of God. Listen. I want to show you something. Ooh. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Verse 15 says, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. That's what you need to. When you realize that your life is changing, that your life is changed, you need to go back to where God has healed you. Hallelujah. You need to go back where God has delivered you. Hallelujah. And the Bible says with a loud voice, glorified God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. And, 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 and look. Because you imagine. And, and I, I, want, I want you. I, 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 I guarantee you something different would happen in your life. Healing would happen in your life. When you realize that there has been a shift in who you are. The Bible says that when he realized that he was healed. Ooh. See, look, see, uh, now, um, the word healed. Folk, look at that word healed right there. I want to show you something. Verse 14 that last sentence says, and it came to pass that as they went their way, that there, as they went, they were cleansed. But this man realized he was healed. I'm not only cleansed, but I'm healed of my leprosy. I'm healed of my condition. I'm healed of the very thing that kept me in that position. Now I have been repositioned. I, 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 I wonder because look, look, I'm going to show you something. I'm almost through. I'm going to show you something. I wonder that when he realized it, did the nine men realize that he left the crowd. See, everybody that you think is on your team, not really on your team, because they was really on your team, they'll run back with you. Because look, look, I, I want to know what he's going back for. But because he was a Gentile, 
Hallelujah. We just got to excuse him because he don't have no manners. We, 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 we're the chosen generation. We are the raw priesthood. Hallelujah. So we need to walk with up. We need to be respectful. Like he said, go show ourselves to the priest. We, we, we got a seven day waiting period to realize how is we really healed. I want to show you something. This Samaritan didn't need seven days. To realize that he was healed. I don't need seven. I, I already know. So while he's still in my presence. I'm going to turn around from all of y'all. While y'all ain't looking. Don't watch me. Because if you know what I know. The Bible says that he ran. Glorifying God. Giving God praise. Giving God all the glory. And the Bible says he fell at his feet. And began to worship. Thanking him. Thanks. Giving God thanks. Giving God's praise. Giving God all the glory. But the Lord turns around and says, was it? Was it? Wasn't there nine more of y'all? Wasn't there? Where is the nine? Where is the nine? Hmm. So here, here's the thing right here. He, he, he gets healed, but he get a double portion. I'm, I'm, I'm because he was thankful enough to break free of the crowd and break free of everybody else and say it's time for me to make a conscious decision hallelujah before it was 10 of us debating on how we should do this thing but because I made a conscious decision to leave the pack because I wanted more I didn't just get a healing, but I was made whole. My life was changed, grandmama. Everything got a whole lot better. God said, look, I'm not just going to just, just, just heal your body, but everything you lost, I'm going to give it back to your whole again. Everything that everybody that turned their back on you, they're going to be the givers from now on out. Uh, I am going to make everybody, your enemies, your footstool. I'm going to make you whole again. Now, now look, what, what I like about it, what I like about it is that Vivian, he never touches any of them. Even when he said, thy faith has made thee whole. The woman with the issue of blood, she, she touched him. What touches Jesus now? What touches him now? Y'all, y'all, look, some of y'all probably didn't catch it. What touches him now? What touches him was his faith in action. Pastor Charles, he took what was contagious to him and flipped the strip and turned it into a contagious miracle. Because when I look at this, when I, when I look at this, and I'm through, I'm through, everybody's standing, everybody's standing, you can stand, everybody's standing. I'm, I'm going to show you something where his, the breach in his life was in the far distance. That was the breach. 
but because he opened his mouth with a loud voice Jesus have mercy on us the Bible said which stood afar off I'm not talking about from here to that door across the street but afar off see we can stream and yell but if we in this room would open our mouths and open our mouths at the same time we'll make a noise that'll shake the foundation of this earth and hell will begin to freeze over hallelujah people will begin to be free and delivered so his breach they closed they sealed the breach when they made up their mind to come and call out to Jesus but he finished it far faster than denying because when he went to Jesus he went to him with a whole heart and to have a whole heart we pretty much got to bend and forgave and let go of everything and he came to him and fell at his feet so he sealed those breaches in his life when Jesus said thou faith Christine thou faith has made thee whole come on somebody You didn't want, you could have been carried in here, but you, you decided I'm going to walk in here. I hear the Lord saying your faith, your faith, come on somebody, your faith has made thee whole. Hallelujah. The faith I want to pray over you just right where you're standing at, right where you're standing at, right where you're standing. And those of you that are watching Facebook Live, I need you to believe that you can do something that you thought that has always been impossible. Thank you, Dini. Thank you. Grandma, could you do me a favor? If you would, just walk right over there. By your daughter. She got it. She got it. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I didn't I didn't know you were coming, but I was I was praying that you would walk in here. I'm, 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 I'm showing you some. I'm showing you a legacy, a strength, strength in action. A mother's hand on her daughter's right now. I need everybody. I need everybody to point their hand this way. I, I know we have issues, but as we point our hand this way, God gonna be taking care of your issue right now. Go see. Yeah, Lord. Ta ta 
Dini, open this oil. This is going to be her oil. This oil ain't never been opened. This oil ain't never been touched. Gloria Bosande de Bosata. He's your Bosata da Bosicata. Hmm. I like your faith right now when you, when it's hurting you to stand, but you refuse to sit. When I said everyone standing, you stood. And God said, You're standing up. Hallelujah. Ooh. I'm going to anoint you, Chris. In the name of Jesus, I anoint you with the oil. I anoint you with the oil. Hey, glory! Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let your hand engulf her with your presence. God, do it. I know that you can do it. You are a mountain mover. You are a mind regulator, a heart fixer. I know that you're able to do a seating in a bondily above all that we can ask or think. So I'm asking you, God, for the same miracle you did with the woman with the issue of blood, blind Bartimaeus, the leopards, Lazarus, just to name a few. God, I pray that God, that you are able to do it right now. Not by power. Not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God, you do it right now. In Jesus' name, I declare that every cell, every cell is being removed right now. I declare the healing power of God is this bursting, getting rid of everything that the chemo and the radiation and what the doctors have said I thank you God because there are miracles in this house right now and that God she's been added to that miracle list right now in the mighty name of Jesus I thank you I thank you I thank you. I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Look, 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 look. Where's the top? Everybody that's dealing with something that knows somebody that's sick. From now on out, it doesn't matter what sickness it is. No matter what sickness it is. When people start talking about making plans for a funeral, start saying, cancel the funeral. Counsel, 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 counsel. Because I serve a God who still says yes, Chris. Who still says yes. Who still says yes. And he's saying yes to you today. He's saying yes to you today. And he's working in your favor. Come on, somebody, give God praise. That's your oil. We're through. We're through. I'll say yes.
Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. And when your spirit speaks to me with my and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. One more time. I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes. Lord, yes. As we're closing, Spirit of the living God, we thank and praise you for your word. We thank and praise you for your presence. Now, God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, may you rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church, come on, let the church, let the church, Say amen.